what's up everybody today i'm talking about a give yourself goosebumps book uh, book number 29 in the series invaders from the big screen uh, this is one that i just read and i actually just uploaded the other day a youtube short of this i just finished it the other day uh, i didn't plan on doing a full review of this at first but the more i thought about it i wanted to talk about this book a little bit more in depth because this one was a surprise uh, just before this i actually read Another GYG book that I didn't really enjoy all that much. And lately, the Give Yourself Goosebumps books that I've read, the last few or so that I've read, have been kind of a disappointment. They've just sort of been mediocre. Uh, last year, I had planned on originally completing the series so I can do a ranking of all of the Give Yourself Goosebumps books from least favorite to favorite. And it's been taking me a lot longer to get through this series than I anticipated, uh, mostly because... <laughs> There's just been some duds in the series, and I've been feeling a little bit burned out on it. Um, you know, not some terrible books, but just a lot of mediocre ones that have making it a bit of a slog to get through this series, if I'm being honest. And it's just, yes. But this one ended up being a pretty big surprise. This is one of the best ones I've read in a while. So yeah, I wanted to do a full review of it. So Invaders from the Big Screen. Um, this is one that has three different story arcs. Most GYGs have two different story arcs. Uh, this one has three, and essentially you and your friend are going to the movie theater, and the starting choice is there are three different movies to choose from that you can watch. The first one is called A House of a Hundred Horrors. It's basically a haunted house type story. Uh, the second one is called Dr. Aqua vs. Agent Z, which is kind of like a superhero comic book type story, I guess. Uh, it's basically about this evil villain named Dr. Aqua, who is... Uh, I guess obsessed with water <laughs> and rides like a jet ski and he has like this fortress out on this like the middle of this lake I think and then the last movie uh, you can opt to see is uh, Going Ape in Blastovision and it's essentially like a King Kong giant gorilla type story and of course it is the one uh, depicted on the cover here so yeah there's three different story arcs in this book and I enjoy all three of them quite a bit, almost equally, if I'm being honest. I wasn't really expecting to. I figured, you know, maybe one or two of the story arcs would be really cool. Uh, that's usually how it goes with these books. There always tends to be like one story arc that's significantly stronger than the other one. But all three of the story arcs in here were pretty solid. Uh, so yeah, the first one, The House of a Hundred Horrors, I think is my favorite. So... Uh, one thing, too, that I want to mention is I really like the transition of reality into the movie. So no matter what movie you choose, basically the story to this book is you're kind of getting sucked into the movie. And then you have to figure out how to, like, survive and then escape uh, back into your own world, back into reality. And for The House of Hundred Horrors, you and your friend are watching the film. There's a couple of twins, uh, siblings, that are exploring this haunted house in the movie. They discover like a trap door, I think it is, and they like fall through the trap door. And then as you and your friend are in the movie theater, you begin to experience this sensation of like falling. And it feels like you're falling out of the theater seat. And you wake up inside the haunted house and realize you have actually fallen through this trap door and are now in the movie and trapped in this haunted house. And you uh, meet the twins, the two characters of this movie. And you have to, like, help them. They're, like, looking for their aunt, I think it is. And you have to, like, help them find her. And throughout this haunted house, various things happen. There's different scenes, uh, different rooms you discover. And it's pretty creepy. And there's a few, like, pretty graphic <laughs> scenes in this haunted house story arc that I quite surprised me. I didn't, in or I just was not expecting them. Uh, there's one where you can go into the basement and you discover essentially like this torture chamber. There's this coffin that has all of these spikes through it. Um, there's like this cool scene with this painting. And these paintings talk and they're alive. The faces on these paintings. And they might be possibly there to help you it, through the haunted house. Or they could be villains. Uh, it's kind of mysterious. And yeah, there's just a lot of cool stuff in this Haunted House story arc. There's one really cool ending. It's a bad ending, but it's a really cool ending. Very violent. <laughs> where you're in this room with these musical instruments. And I will say nothing further on that, but I really like that ending. It was it's kind of funny and surprisingly violent. 
And yeah, I think this one was my favorite. I didn't really have any negatives with it other than it was a little bit short. But with this book being split up into three story arcs, they only have so much room to work with. Uh, each story arc, you know, is maybe like 40 pages long or a little over 40 pages. I think these books in general are about like 130 to 140 pages each. This one is 137 pages long. Um, so that is one minor like negative I have with this book is all three of the story arcs are a little bit short. They, I feel like they could have been fleshed out more and had a, a little bit more going on with them. Uh, but yeah, The House of 100 Horrors was probably my favorite one. Uh, not by a huge margin. Uh, but then the second one, Dr. Aqua vs. Agent C. I really enjoyed that one as well. And the transition with this story into the movie is also really cool and really creative. It, it, it just seems like kind of a small, minor detail, not something you might think about. But I, I really enjoyed it. So in this movie, you're watching the movie, uh, the hero of the film, uh, Agent Z, is chasing after Dr. Dr. Aqua. And Dr. Aqua breaks open this big, like, dam, and all of this water comes uh, flooding in through the movie screen into the theater and, like, floods the movie theater, and you're suddenly, you know, thrust into this big water flood with you and your friend, and you're trying to survive, trying to stay afloat, trying not to drown. And then Dr., not Dr. Aqua, Agent Z, um, the superhero of the movie, comes through the movie screen as well and, I think, like, helps you and your friend and he says he needs help catching Dr. Aqua. And you're given the choice to go into the movie with him to try to defeat him. Or to try to look for Dr. Aqua in your own world and, or, and try to defeat him that way. Um, so yeah, this was a really fun story arc as well. I really didn't have any major complaints with this one. I'm typically not a fan of this little subgenre. As some of you might already know, superhero, comic book type stuff is like a subgenre that doesn't appeal to me most of the time but I really enjoyed this one I thought this was a fun story arc as well again my only real complaint with it is that it was just a little bit short it could have been fleshed out a little bit more uh, there's really some creative stuff in this story arc there's these creatures called human gators or humanigators that are basically uh, half human and half alligator and they are sort of like Dr. Aqua's henchmen and you encounter them a couple of times in the story arc and have to try to avoid them and it's just really cool and fun and creative. And this is a more of like an adventurous, like action-packed type story arc. It's not really all that scary or anything like that. Uh, but it was just a lot of fun. And then the third story arc in here, and the one depicted on the cover, is called Going Ape and Blastovision. Um, or I think it's just called Going Ape. Uh, let me see. No, it's called Going Ape and Blastovision. I think the Blastovision is supposed to be like a 3D gimmicky type of thing like for the movie I don't think it's the actual title I don't know um anyway this one also has a cool transition where you and your friend are watching the movie there's this giant gorilla ape-like creature on the uh screen very much like King Kong and all of a sudden the screen goes dark goes black you can't see anything you have on the 3d glasses you're trying to figure out you know why you're not seeing anything on the screen and then you realize it's because there's a giant gorilla hand reaching through the screen towards you and your friend. I think you pull off the 3D glasses, if I remember correctly. And the gorilla's arm grabs you and your friend and pulls you back into the movie screen and you're sucked into the movie. And now all of a sudden you are trapped and lost in this jungle about to be the dinner of this very angry giant gorilla. <laughs> uh, so yeah, again, just a, a small detail with these transition scenes that I think is very creative. And very cool. I really appreciated that about it. And this story arc was also just very fun. And again, more on the adventurous, like, action side of things. Not really scary. Not really all that horror-based. Uh, but it was just, it was fun. Um, there's a few different things that can happen in this story arc, this third one. Uh, if, there, if you go down one path, you discover that the gorilla talks and you can choose to help him. Um, it turns out that he's friendly. Another story arc, you encounter this hunter who is trying to hunt down the ape. And the ape is depicted more of a monster. And you have to help the hunter uh, like capture this gorilla and defeat him before he wrecks havoc. And yeah, it was fun. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that one. Um, another minor negative, I guess, that I do have with this story arc. And with all three of them in general, not just this third one. Is that... 
They are kind of basic. They lack a little bit in game function and puzzles. There was only one puzzle in this entire book. And I prefer to have more of that in these as someone who has read a lot of them. I prefer ones that are a little bit more complex, ones that just have a little bit more going on with them instead of just simple story to them. Uh, some people might like that about this one book, though, that it stays a little bit more simple. Uh, it's not challenging in any way. It's just pretty much straightforward story. Uh, I would have preferred a little bit more uh, game function to it, like I said, puzzles. That's just my personal preference. And it also is a little bit too easy. I think there should have only been one good ending per story arc. But two of the story arcs, uh, Going 8 and I think, was it the, I can't remember if it was the House of Horrors one or if it was the, if it was the Dr. Aqua one. One of the other story arcs also had two good endings in it that you could get. And I would have preferred to have only one good ending per story arc. To me, that makes more sense, especially with them being so short. It, there doesn't really need to be more than one. It just makes it a little bit too simple, too easy to get to that good ending. For me, part of the fun of these books, or part of the goal of them, I think, is to try to find that one good ending. And, and it's not as satisfying if it's too easy to get to it, if there's not at least a little bit of a challenge along the way. Um, that's just something that, again, is my personal preference. Uh, but yeah, this book was a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't quite love it. It's nothing amazing. But I feel like this would be a good starting point for the Give Yourself Goosebumps series because it lacks, you know, some of that more complex game and puzzle ideas that you see in, like, a lot of the special edition GYG books, for example. So someone just starting out in the Give Yourself Goosebumps series, maybe if you haven't read a lot of these, I think this would be a good starting point. It's a lot of fun. It has three different story, distinct story arcs to choose from instead of the typical two. Um, but it's... It's just a fun book, and yeah, I think it would be a good entry point. I think my rating for this book might change, because as I continue to read through the GYG series, I've noticed that a lot of my ratings for these books are the same, and ranking this series, I'm just going to tell you right now, is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, I've had a little bit of trouble <laughs> ranking Goosebumps series in the past, because a lot of them kind of blend together, or get the same ratings from me. But I think this GYG series is going to be the hardest to rank out of all of them. Uh, so yeah, I'm <laughs> not really looking forward to that. We'll see how it goes. My rating for this book might change, but as of now, I think I'm going to give it a 3.75 out of 5. This was a very good book. Definitely one of the better Give Yourself Goosebumps books. I just didn't quite love it. It wasn't amazing. I think if this book was a little bit longer, had, had a more clear objective to each story arc, it had like some more puzzles to do just some more story interaction instead of just straightforward plot, I guess. I think I would have liked it a little bit more. And then again, too, had like one good ending per story arc. I probably would have bumped this up a little bit higher. But yeah, 3.75 out of 5 is still a pretty good rating. Like I said, one of the better GYG books I've read in recent times. And this has me hopeful for... A few of the other GYG books that I have left, I only have a few left to read. And some of them I'm really looking forward to revisiting because I remember really enjoying them as a kid. So I'm looking forward to rereading a few that I have left. The other ones, uh, I'm not so sure on, but yeah. <laughs> That's Invaders from the Big Screen. Have you guys read this one? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down in the comments below. I thought this was a pretty fun book. And that's all I have for today, guys. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.